Here's example three with tabular integration. So notice this one's uh, a definite integral, right? So uh, the integral from zero to pi of x cubed times sine of x dx. Okay, so um, when we did example one a couple of videos ago, uh, we talked um, in a little more detail about what tabular integration is, why it works the way it does, how to set it up. So we'll skip a lot of those details here, um, just like in example two, but we'll, we'll do the details that are relevant for this problem here. Okay, so we're doing tabular integration. So the first thing we do is set up that table. Okay, so uh, first column is derivatives of u. Okay, and then the second column is uh, integrals of v primed. Okay, so derivatives of u, uh, integrals, integrals of v primed. Okay. Okay, so uh, how do we pick u? Well, it's remember tabular integration really just is integration by parts. Uh, it, it literally is integration by parts, just squished together, compactified. Um, to make things quicker and easier. So since it is integration by parts, we're going to choose u the same way we always do with integration by parts. Um, look, what do we have here? We have an algebraic function and a trig function. Go down the list, what appears first? Algebraic functions appear first, so we, ch uh, we choose u to be uh, the algebraic function. Okay, so uh, u is x cubed, so um, let's write that down here. So here's our u, okay? So that means dv is everything else left over. So u is x cubed. We put that here. What goes here? Uh, v primed is the first thing we put here. Remember, v primed is just dv without the dx. So dv is sine of x dx. Okay, so that means uh, v primed is just this guy right here, sine of x. Okay, so v primed is sine of x. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so that's what's going on there. Um, now, you know, if you really want, you could put the dx there, but it's best just to ignore it because we don't want to have it when we go down the column. But anyway, so that's why we're saying v prime and not dv here. Uh, but anyway, so now what, what do we do next? Uh, the next step is always take derivatives here until we hit zero. So x cubed, the derivative is 3x squared. The derivative of that is 6x. The derivative of that is 6, and the derivative of that is zero. So we stop there. Um, let's extend the table a little bit. Okay, now the next step after that is to take these integrals of u prime, keep integrating until we hit the same row. Okay, so if we have sine of x, uh, if we integrate that, we get negative cosine of x. If we integrate that, we get negative sine of x. If we integrate that, we get uh, cosine of x. If we integrate that, we get sine of x. Okay, and again, since it is integration by parts, forget the arbitrary constants here. Okay, don't, don't do them here until the end. But actually, this is a definite integral, so there won't be any arbitrary constants at all. So that's nice. Okay, and also we're going to see um, not a whole lot changes since it's a definite integral. The process is exactly the same along the way, but just when we get to the end, we're just going to evaluate instead of leaving it in terms of x and putting a plus c. Okay, so um, what's the next step? So we did our derivatives of u, our integrals of u prime, so the next step is to pair them up. Okay, remember this guy always gets paired here. Always go diagonal down. Diagonal down, diagonal down, uh, like that, okay? So, um, and then our alternating SIGN signs. So this guy is plus, this guy is minus, plus, minus. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> that, let's fix this goofy looking one here. Plus, okay, eh, that's a little better. All right, anyway, now we just squish it all together. So um, integral, let's keep this red color here, integral from zero to pi of x cubed times sine of x dx equals, so what this says is uh, plus x cubed times negative cosine of x, x cubed times negative cosine of x, okay? But we're evaluating, okay, we're integrating from zero to pi, so this gets evaluated from zero to pi, okay? Evaluated from zero to pi minus 3x squared times negative sine of x, minus 3x squared times negative sine of x, evaluated from 0 to pi. Okay, <clears throat> Kind of running out of room here, so now I'm going to have to go to the next line. So then this becomes a plus 6x times positive cosine of x. So plus 6x times positive cosine of x, again, evaluated from 0 to pi. Okay. Um, and then minus... Okay, minus 6 times sine of x. 
minus 6 times sine of x uh, evaluated from 0 to pi. Okay. Now, do I have to evaluate each term separately like that? Do I have to do 0 to pi here and then here, here, and here separately? Uh, no, if you don't want to do that, you could just put it all together and then evaluate the entire expression from 0 to pi. Uh, but personally, I don't really like doing that. Um, I prefer to do it this way. It's really whatever you prefer. Uh, I do think this is a little bit simpler this way. Um, you might have a different opinion. That's totally fine if you want to do it this way or do it all together and then just evaluate the whole thing from 0 to pi. Uh, it is the exact same thing. I just don't really like to do it like that. Okay, so anyway, this is um, x cubed. Okay, so remember how do we do this? We evaluate at the top and then minus evaluating at the bottom. So actually first, let's simplify this. This is negative x cubed times cosine of x. Uh, from 0 to pi, okay, and then plus 3x squared sine of x from 0 to pi, okay, and then plus uh, 6x cosine of x from 0 to pi, and then minus 6 sine of x from 0 to pi, okay, that's a pi, very ugly pi. Okay, now um, let's evaluate. So if we evaluate at the top, what happens? Uh, evaluate at the top, we have negative pi cubed cosine of pi, and then what happens? Minus, if we evaluate at the bottom, what do we have? Negative zero cubed times, who cares, because we're multiplying by zero. Okay, so zero cubed is zero. Multiply by zero, you just get more zeros, so this is really just minus zero. Okay. Or if you want to get technical about it, it's minus negative zero, so plus zero, but it's the exact same thing, uh, just zero. Okay. All right, now what happens here? Plus uh, 3 times pi squared times sine of pi. Okay, evaluate at the top minus at the bottom. Okay, so at the top we have 3 pi squared times the sine of pi. What is the sine of pi? Remember from trig, the sine of pi, let's zoom in a little bit here. Uh, the sine of pi is 0, okay, so just 0. So really uh, 3 pi squared doesn't even matter, it's just 0. And then minus at the bottom, what happens at the bottom? 3 times 0 squared times the sine of 0. Well, 0 squared is just 0. Sine of 0 is also 0, so that's just a whole lot of 0. Okay. Uh, 3 times 0 squared, so automatically we're just done there. Okay, 3 times 0 squared is just 0, so just zeros. All right, so that's nice. This actually, this whole thing is 0, that's great. Now what happens here? Plus, uh, evaluate at the top, 6 pi times the cosine of pi minus, so that's evaluating at the top, what if we evaluate at the bottom, 6 times 0 times cosine of 0. Okay, cosine of 0 is 1, but who cares because we're multiplying by 0, so we have a 0. Okay, and then uh, then we have, let's say, uh, minus, let's do this, let's say plus um, negative 6 times the sine of pi, but what is the sine of pi? It's 0, okay, it's 0. Actually, you know what, let's do this like this. Let's take that uh, negative 6 out. So it's going to be minus 6 times the sine of x from 0 to pi like this. So minus 6 times that. OK, we're going to do it like that. So minus 6 times, so we're doing sine of x from 0 to pi. So sine of pi, so evaluate at the top, what's the sine of pi? It's 0. Minus evaluating at the bottom, what's the sine of 0? Uh, it's 0. OK, so that's just a lot of trick stuff there. So that's why you really want to remember the unit circle, things like that and the trig functions of common angles. So um, sine of pi is 0, so that's where this 0 comes from. Sine of 0 is 0, that's where this 0 comes from. Okay, and then minus 6 out here. Okay, So that's great, there's a lot of simplification here. So um, negative pi cubed, what's the cosine of pi? The cosine of pi is negative 1. Okay, and then minus 0 plus blah blah blah, this whole thing is 0. Um, so then we end up with plus 6 pi times, again, the cosine of pi is negative 1, okay, and then minus 0, blah, 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 and then minus 6 times 0, so this whole thing is 0, okay, so that's great. So um, really, this is all we have, okay, then when we simplify that, what do we get? Uh, negative pi cubed times negative 1, that's positive pi cubed, and then plus 6 pi times negative 1 is minus 6 pi, okay. All right, so that's our answer here, pi cubed minus 6 pi. So um, this is example three with tabular integration, and it's a definite integral. So we see the process is exactly the same. Choose u the same way you always do for integration by parts, because that's what tabular integration is. It's just integration by parts squished together in this table form here. 
I'll let zoom out a little bit here. Um, and then get your V prime here, which remember is just DV without the DX on it. Okay, so DV without the DX is just sine of X. So put that here. Take derivatives of U until you get to zero. Take integrals in the other column until you get to that same row. Always pair them up diagonal down like that. The positive and negative signs alternate plus minus plus minus always. Always like that. And then just uh, slap it all together. Okay, positive X cubed times negative cosine of X that we had here. Um, and then minus 3x squared times negative sine of x, so minus 3x squared times negative sine of x, uh, and so on and so forth, continue that. Simplify a little bit, evaluate each term separately or all together if you want. Um, in this case, it probably wouldn't have really matter a whole lot, but I just like to do each one separately. So there's not, you know, it's easier because you have less minus signs to worry about, sort of. Um, anyway, then we had that. Um, evaluate, simplify, you get pi cubed minus 6 pi. So really, almost in a sense, uh, the algebra or the trig might have been a little bit worse than the calculus part. So the calculus part wasn't that bad, right? To set up this table, take derivatives and integrals. Um, and these functions aren't really that complicated, so that's nice. Um, and then just evaluate, simplify, watch out, be careful with your minus signs. Wasn't too bad here. Remember your trig, your unit circle, things like that. Uh, that showed up here. Okay, so kind of a lot of stuff going on, but it's uh, each piece by itself is really not too bad. But putting it all together, just got to be careful and watch out for the details. Anyway, pi q minus 6 pi is the final answer. And if you want, you could have done this with integration by parts manually, but you'd have to do it three times because you have the x cubed. So that means three times integration by parts, um, which is completely doable. It's totally possible, but it would just be a big mess. Um, so we see even this was kind of messy, right? But it wasn't terrible compared to how it could have been. But anyway, if you do it integration by parts manually, you'll get the same answer, pi q minus 6 pi. So that's example three with tabular integration.